All right, boys, these are some of the lightest patch notes we have had in a very long time. There's a couple key things that you might have missed. There are a few things that are very well hidden in here that are potentially very big changes. So I want to go over all of that. I want to try to slim down, save you some time. If you don't want to go and read, you know, like a whole bunch of pages of stuff and you want to be able to filter through it and just listen in the background, this is the video for you. Now, remember, if you're enjoying all this content, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos and without further ado let's get into it all right so one big thing about these patch notes is that a lot of the stuff that's in these patch notes are actually already covered in the balance manifesto that i made a video of if i remember i'll put a link to it up there so go watch that if you want some information on some stuff that i missed from here or just watch it first but there are a few things within these patch notes that are relatively important now i'm going to make other videos that will cover some of the basics of the new atlas there's a lot to go over there an insane amount to go over there so i'm really not going to cover those things in here. I'm just going to cover the things that really do need to be brought to some players' attention, I feel, when it comes to the patch notes. There's a bunch of new items, a bunch of new cool stuff. We can talk about that in another video. However, starting with the minor new content and features, we can have multiple Blight encounters in a single area. It's going to be really solid for anybody who likes farming Blight. The Duelist is getting Act 6 through Act 10 audio dialogue. Now, it's not only just the Templar. For anyone who loves Delve, a flask are going to be refilling when you go to the Mining Camet. This is a really big change for minion and specter players is that Spe raised specters most recent monster types are now saved to your character and may be desecrated but don't get too excited yet about desecrate because there's something that we got to go find a little bit later delve monsters that's cool and all and improve the art and such one additional thing is that they are going to be continuing with the process of rotating through all the different maps adding in some removing others keep in mind that on top of this they are going to try to shuffle up some of the divination card locations so that they're all still available all of this is the standard stuff that happened last league and I think the league before but that is pretty standard at this point one big change is that awakened gems are now going to drop from invitations and the maven they're no longer going to drop from conquerors or cirrus so this is probably going to make those gems a little bit more expensive I would guess but you never know they might be a better drop rate but I kind of don't really believe that so it is what it is another big change that they're making is that the conqueror is being moved to secondary late game content means that a lot of those influence mods are going to be a lot harder to get. One of the major things in here is that the plus one to level of gems on amulets is being moved to the core modifier pool. Now this might seem like a really good change at first, However, anyone that knows how crafting works in Path of Exile and has ever crafted one of these plus one plus one amulets is going to know that this is most likely, almost assuredly, a massive nerf to plus one plus one amulets. However, it does have the side effect of those people who are absolutely ridiculous being able to get plus one plus one plus one amulets now in case you have like a gem that can take use of all of them. So uh, that is possible, but still, you're not gonna be able to just smash two together and be done with it anymore. These mods are really, really hard to roll most of the time, so we'll probably find a way to get them, but as for right now, this seems like a nerf. The other options here are good, but it's mainly just some maximum resistance stuff moved over, not too much else there. The Maven has gotten some of her items buffed. You'll notice that there are plus one to maximum charges on each of these items. Do keep in mind that the maximum charges don't really count because those items make you change those charges into other kinds of charges. So for example, you can't really do power charge stacking with this item. It doesn't really work. The other two items are cool, but we'll see if there's anything worthwhile in there. They're moving all of the Atlas base types into the main drop pool because uh, atlas regions aren't a thing uh, we'll talk about that in another video but yeah same thing with sextants is that sextants are kind of changing and watch stones are not really a thing anymore they're going to be called void stones is what i think they are now but having the lower tier sextants doesn't make sense anymore so they're going to be moving them to just prime sextants and of course elevated sextants as well so that has kind of changed a little bit however one big thing is that they are now making it so that you can very easily trade sextants with a new currency item called a surveyor's compass these are going to be purchasable from Kirit, kind of similar to how you can purchase the beast orbs from Einhar, going to work very, very similarly. So now you can roll these and sell these and buy these in bulk and just get the exact ones that you need instead of having to deal with a whole bunch of extra garbage and layers of stuff. The Vault Temple map is being made a little bit better. It's going to have some more uh, 10 additional guarded Vault vessels if you've ever done that sextant before. It should be pretty good. Blight Ravage maps, they're increasing the quantity of items that drop from them. I still don't know if they're going to be good or not. We'll see. 20% quantity is... Uh, 
pretty decent. We'll see. Already spoke about the divination card and Atlas rotation. They're just moving them around to different places. Prophecy is being removed from the game. So they have moved a lot of the different things that were located in Prophecy to other areas. Like they've moved some items to drop off of specific bosses or they've moved um, things to certain divination cards and so on and so forth. Do keep in mind in this list that there are a decent amount of uniques that have just been straight removed from the game. There are also a couple uniques where they removed the lower version and only kept the higher tier version. For example, the Itziri's mirror item that is going to now drop off of Itziri only has the higher tier version. There's a couple different ones like that, so do keep that in mind. We are unfortunately getting the Act 2 improvements, as they like to call them. A lot of the monsters are going to be a little bit more difficult, probably have some more life. There's going to be a new variety of monsters, including Spriggan's Wasps, Undead Vol, Scuttlers, and Salvagers. This probably means that maps are going to be a little bit more difficult as well, so do keep that in mind. Look out for some uh, new creatures that could be uh, making your time in Ray class a little bit more dangerous. Tormented Martyrs are those green ghosts, the torment spirits that just randomly make enemies' corpses explode. They've tried to normalize the damage of that a little bit, so it's not as bad as it was before. That's pretty decent. And this, the existing monster modifier change, this is deceptively worrying. This is probably one of the scarier things that I've read in this entire patch notes. Um, there are three lines that I'm particularly worried about. The first one is the aura radius for allies move and attack faster has been increased to be the same as other monster auras. Do you know that green aura around monsters sometimes that makes them like zoom across the map and catch up to you in zero seconds? That's getting a bigger radius now. Apparently it was smaller than the other ones. That's pretty spooky. Caster monsters are now able to have extra damage as a modifier. I didn't even know this was something that they couldn't have. But now that caster monsters can have extra damage, caster monsters can be some of the most dangerous like monsters in the game. And now they can do more damage. Woohoo, great. And then there's this line. Added new magic and rare monster modifiers for chaos resistance for all monsters. This is something that hasn't existed before, but Chaos builds will now do just randomly less damage to certain monsters. It made a sense that it existed in all of its other forms, but not Chaos, but that's definitely interesting. But those are the lines that I would be interested in. The rest of them don't matter too much. Besides the fact that cast speed and spell damage are also going to be modifiers on rare monsters and magic monsters now. So caster monsters are going to be significantly more dangerous. Wonderful, right? If you've ever gotten randomly destroyed by the mausoleum map boss, you know, where he spawns those two little things and they float around and do detonate dead all over the place and one-shot you, they're nerfing Tolman a little bit, thankfully, so we won't have to worry as much about that. Hit-based spellcasting as well as bows are being changed. I'm going to skip through most of this, however, I do want to give a particular shout-out to Orb of Storms being annihilated. I don't know why they decided that Orb of Storms just wasn't going to be a skill anymore, but if I can find it here... The problem with Orb of Storms is that they are making it so that it no longer has a duration, right? It has Orb disappears after 10 strikes at gem level 1, up to 29 at gem level 20. So if you invest in a pretty significant amount of cast speed, you're going to blow through this Orb of Storms like nothing. So if you cast like four or five times a second, it'll only last a few seconds. And if you're doing like really fast casting, which is typically the way that you would make the most use of Orb of Storms, it's just going to disappear. Maybe if you get it up to a super high level, you can get like 35 or something like that, maybe a little bit more. But it's kind of a little unfortunate that they made this ability that a lot of people were excited about. But now we find out that it doesn't have a duration. It's just got disappears after 10 strikes. Now, scrolling back up a little bit, they have added a bunch of additional gems in this list that have been buffed, such as Ball Lightning is going to be buffed a little bit, Blade Blast and Blade Vortex and Blade Fall are all getting some changes, Blade Fall being the most notable here because Blade Vortex um, should still be okay, but I don't know that it's really going to save it, and Blade Blast has area of effect issues, it doesn't really care too much about its normal damage, its normal damage is already ridiculous, it's just the overlapping that causes the problems. Some other notable ones is that Exsanguinate did get a on-hit damage buff, but it did not get damage over time changes, so so this means that the Fizz Trapper is almost assuredly perfectly fine. 
Doesn't seem to have changed very much at all. The main gym can't overlap with huge amounts of AoE, but who cares? It's good even if it only hits one per round, so that's perfectly fine. Ice Nova got some pretty significant buffs here, so maybe like a self-cast Ice Nova Frostbolt build that was popular a few leagues ago might be pretty good again. There's a lot of people talking about Lightning Tendrils. I think Freak made a video and he said something about like Lightning Tendrils Ignite or something and people freaking out about it. Lightning Tendrils feels terrible to play. Uh, don't get baited into playing this ability. Maybe it might be good, but I highly doubt it. For Forbidden Right, which was already really powerful, you might know the build that Rue had been playing at one point, the self-cast Forbidden Right build, they buffed it. I don't know why they buffed it this much. Forbidden Right was already ridiculously powerful, and now they're buffing it? Probably gonna be a tier 1 build. Winter Orb is also getting an interesting change where it has 150% more projectile frequency while channeling. Previously it was 100%, so that should be pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know that Winter Orb will be great still, but you could probably get a pretty good satisfaction out of it now. I didn't really ever like the way that Winter Orb played, but a bunch of people do, so maybe that's up to you. Now, we did talk about how all of these are being nerfed before, but we have the full numbers now. It's pretty bad, but do keep in mind that this is meant to be basically a negligible change when combined with all of the changes to these gems up above but do keep in mind that if your version of this got nerfed and on top of that you didn't get a buff to the main ability that you're interested in it is a pretty significant nerf one interesting thing to keep in mind with traps is that traps did kind of get a double tap here in the sense that cluster traps as well as multiple trap supports got nerfed as well as the trap support gem also got nerfed so what I'm going to say is you're most likely not going to be using cluster traps or multi-trap support anymore for trap supported ones. You're most likely going to be using swift assembly. That should be perfectly fine. It'll give you a chance to throw more traps and it should still be pretty good. We'll see about that. It's something that I feel like I'm going to have to do the numbers and test the numbers a little bit on, but that could be something that you could do if you're worried about doing significantly less damage. Now, also to go along with that, a lot of the main line traps have been buffed. Blade trap was almost a pretty good ability, so this might make it pretty solid. Explosive trap was good before. Now, now with this increased bonus, it should be really solid. Fire Trap hasn't had too much love recently, but maybe someone can figure it out. Ice Trap was already really good before, and now it has significantly more effectiveness of added damage and a bunch of extra damage at top level. Ice Trap should be really strong. I don't really like Lightning Trap, um, so it kind of is what it is. Holy Flame Totem is good for leveling ability, but eh. The rest of these here are things that we've already extensively talked about in the previous video. As I said, Orb of Storm is kind of unfortunate. Ignite is getting changed a little bit. Overall, Ignite is being reduced by a certain percentage and a lot of the abilities that do ignite are getting buffed so it should be mostly fine for most ignite abilities but do keep in mind things like fire burst is having its like cooldown increased as well as things like armageddon brand are having their activation uh, frequency reduced so there are some small things in here that might be interesting to look at if any of your particular builds use these abilities also penance brand is now doing 90 percent more damage with ailments per energy after the first that's a pretty big buff so maybe Penance Brand Ignite could be worthwhile if you can get it working. Still going to be super expensive though. Now, I feel the same way about hit-based bow attacks that I feel about self-cast in that both of these are going to be deceptive buffs. There's going to be particular skills that were already good before or are mechanically good and will still be fine. But, and I want you to know this, that even if they change these abilities and make them significantly stronger, keep in mind that they're only going to be doing similar damage to what they were already doing in 3.14. So if you remember how casting felt, how self-casting felt in 3.14, if you thought it was bad then, this is most likely not going to solve the problem. Nothing is mechanically changing, they're just shifting the numbers around. But do keep in mind, if it felt bad then, it's most likely going to feel bad now. So don't get baited into playing playing one of these builds and thinking that it's going to go well, make sure to go and look at all the different content creators, people that you trust, and see what they're saying about any particular builds if you're worried about it. Now, as I had said previously, the physical damage on the bases of bows, when it said it was going to be up to 50% more, they really were using some clever flowery language there because on the lower level bows, it is up to 50% more, but on these higher tier bows, it's really not that much more. In some particular cases, 
increases, it's still a pretty good buff, but on the best bows already, the changes are definitely not 50% more. But it should be a good change to the base bows. However, they are modifying a bunch of the unique bows to be uh, less powerful now that the bases are better, so the uniques aren't getting much better, unfortunately. They also do have like the list of quivers here that you can go through for your particular quiver, but we've talked about most of this in the balance manifesto before, and also they've updated all of the quivers. Sources of added damage is something we talked about in the balance manifesto. They were removing added damage from gems and moving it onto the items. This is another shift of base power in the game and gems being moved onto items, and it's going to make things more expensive to be able to use. I genuinely don't feel that the bow changes are going to do that much for solving the problem with bows. The problem with bow builds has always been they're really hard to scale, they require a lot of money to get going, and they're very squishy early on. None of those things are changing. I actually feel that they're getting worse. I might be wrong, but that's my gut instinct when I read through these patch notes. Previously, they did talk about Hydrosphere. Hydrosphere is essentially dead now. It's got a cooldown on how often it can proc. Triggering marks is going to be very, very nice. I once again talked about that in the previous video. Fortification is going to be a little bit easier to use now. This is something new and very interesting. There's going to be a mark mastery that gives a 10% chance to gain a frenzy charge on hit against a marked enemy. This is very surprising. Because of the new mark change where you're going to be able to like support an attack any attack on your character that can apply a mark now, this is a solve to getting frenzy charges on single target for a lot of build. Really, really powerful. Um, Flicker Strike might be able to benefit from this a little bit, might make it somewhat easier to get it going on single target, should be pretty solid. Now, don't get baited by this line, because as far as I can tell, this is in particular having to do with items that say you gain reduced resistances or you have reduced resistances. This doesn't mean that the maximum negative resist that you can get is 100. This isn't a nerf to Doriani or anything like that as far as I can tell by what I'm reading it just means that you can't like force your uh, resistances to go into like a negative loop or some kind of crazy thing there right now let's talk a little bit about detonate dead because this is something that people are interested in detonate dead they did say that they were changing this and honestly this is kind of a buff in some ways However, there is this sneaky little bit here that they didn't talk about in the previous one, so people have been testing Detonate Dead, and maybe it might not be as good as it seemed. We're gonna have to test this. This is something that I am going to test myself over at twitch.tv slash bigducks, which as always you should go follow by the way. But they are maxing the corpse life of a bunch of the specters that have super high life totals, and their life is being brought down to match the Katava's Herald monsters. Now, if you go and look at DS Lily's um, life specter percentages here, if we look at the list what you'll notice is that there are going to be a bunch of specters that have like 576% life, 750% life, all kinds of good stuff. And then if you go and you look at Katava's Herald, you'll notice it's 360%. That's a pretty sizable nerf to damage. So I'm going to test this. I won't know until I've actually tested it, but 360% is a lot less than like 750% more life. So hopefully it should still be okay. Hopefully it should still work pretty well. The damage was already absolutely ridiculous before. So now maybe it'll just be really, really good. We'll have to see. Now they didn't say anything else about Seismic Trap or Toxic Rain. This is the same nerfs that we had before. And now with Seismic Trap, knowing that Exsanguinate did not get heavily nerfed, should be still fine. They made a change to Spectral Summon Wolf that I didn't know anybody used, but cool. I guess it'll work a little bit better and the wolves won't just constantly reset. Um, I did talk pretty extensively about March of the Legion in the other video, as well as Shade Form, Strength of Blood, and the Dancing Dervish, as well as Perfidy, all of the items here. Void Fletcher got annihilated. If you liked Void Fletcher builds and you used Void Fletcher on your build, it got trashed. I don't know that this item is good at all anymore. It went from 25% more area damage to from 100 and 65% effectiveness of added damage from 120. That's pretty bad. They've added a few more sources of recouping life, which is okay. It's a decent mechanic. You can actually make use of it pretty well. If you do stack quite a bit of it, it does just recover your health pool if you have like, you know, just health as your defensive layer. They are moving a couple of the crafts into much easier to access places, specifically ones talking about socket crafting options. Previously, these would be in places like Delve, but now they're going to be in the Mines, the Grand Arena, and Comb Stronghold. Should be much, much easier to obtain. You don't have to worry about going into Delve. We do have Kyrix League mods. Zana is gone. She went on a trip and is probably going to, uh, you know, like fight us at some point. We'll see what happens with that. These League mods are okay. They're not anything great. Uh, Fortune Favors the Brave is pretty solid if you're going to do anything here. Ritual could be pretty strong. 
but the rest of these are pretty mediocre. They're about even in cost. That's why I say Fortune Favors the Brave is probably pretty good. They are making some changes to the user interface. Notably, they're making it so that there are going to be a stash tab in the map stash that is going to be specifically for Elder, Shaper, and Conqueror maps. They are also adding the option to hide your life and mana reservation. If you always got annoyed when your life or mana bars had like little tiny itty bitty slivers available, now you can see your full mana bar and always forget that you have your auras on. So I don't know that I would do that. They've made it so that advanced mod description are always on now. So if you didn't know what those were, press alt on some of your items and now you'll know. And then they fixed a whole bunch of bugs as usual. And then they have also added a couple of things in here, as you can see here. Keep an eye out on this list as the days go on because they'll probably move it around up and down. And that is my best attempt at TLDRing the patch notes without skipping anything that wasn't already in the balance manifesto. Now, as I said, you might need to go and control F a little bit in there if there's particular things that you're interested in that I didn't notice. So I tried to do my best to just give you some things to listen to in the background. Hopefully it was enlightening and look forward to a bunch more content on all kinds of other things going on on top of all of the builds and stuff that I'm going to try to make. So we'll see what happens. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the notification bell and stay safe out there in Ray class. And I will see you guys in the next video.